Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. And that's the steering actuator out of my boat. This video was shot over several different days, over a few months. Basically the story of what went wrong with that and what we're doing to take care of it. So if you'd like to watch the whole thing, I've got it here. If you don't want to watch every bit of it, I've got timestamps in the description so you can fast forward to the sections you'd like to see. So a few weeks before the end of the boating season, I started noticing some problems with my power steering. I shot some footage at that time as I was trying to figure out what was going on with the situation here. Earlier last week, I was out on my boat and I was uh, running around and whenever I slowed down and was kind of cruising around, actually shooting some video, uh, I heard a sound. The only way I can describe the sound I heard is a roaring sound. And if you've ever had a car with a bad power steering pump or a power steering pump that was really low on fluid, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that's exactly what it sounded like. But that faint roaring sound, of course, I've got my phone up there by the cockpit, was definitely coming from under the engine cover. So I shut off the motor, popped the hood, or the back seat, <laughs> you know, uh, opened it up to take a look. And when I got down in here, uh, I checked the power steering fluid on the power steering pump and uh, it was very low. All right, so here's our power steering pump. On the front of our engine, it's located all the way down here. And uh, it's kicked off at an angle here, but this one does not have a separate reservoir. This line here does not actually go into the power steering pump. It actually goes into the heat exchanger. So this is how you check your power steering fluid in this boat. And if you can see this or not, it says full cold. And there is pretty much nothing on this stick. Matter of fact, what I'm trying to figure out is exactly how low this really is. So if there's nothing on that stick, let's stick a, I made a double Q-tip here. Let's go way down in this reservoir. All right, good, we did find some fluid. And it's kind of a brown color. This is not the other type of steering where you fill the fluid up uh, on the uh, steering wheel. Um, I forget what those are called. I'll write it above. But anyway, Volvo Pentas basically have a cable that goes from the steering wheel back here to the engine. And that cable pushes on a, uh, a almost like a power steering rack. And that's how it steers. And then the power steering pump has a couple of lines that hook up to that. Some people say use the Volvo fluid. Some people say use power steering fluid from a car. Some people say use ATF, automatic transmission fluid. And then of course, people will tell you different things about those fluids and say, well, yes, you can use that, but you need to make sure you're using the one that's like this and like that. It's quite confusing. Um, I still haven't finished doing my research, but what I wanted to do is come down and see how low it was. Using the wrong fluid in there could cost me that whole steering assembly. And that steering assembly is a very expensive part and very hard to get to. And I'll show you, uh, I'm gonna bring the camera here into the engine and try to show you some up closer footage. But it's located behind the engine. Um, and it's really difficult just to get to it, just to see if it's leaking. Now, shame on me because I actually did not test that fluid, uh, did not check that fluid level when I first purchased this boat. So it could have been low for a very long time and it has a very, very slow leak. And it's just after running for a long period of time, it gets low enough where it makes the pump whine. That's a distinct possibility. And that's why I'm hoping the situation is here. Or something could have blown out, which is causing me to lose power steering fluid. Some places are easy to check and some places are hard to check. So, the camera is underneath of the power steering pump now. I can't get my head under there, but the camera's under there. When I felt around under here, it seemed like there was nothing leaking from the back 
or the bottom of the pump. So then the lines probably run along through here back to the power steering actuator. So this rod here and the rod below it are part of the power steering system. So those two rods there slide in and out and when the boat is steering that's what works all that sort of stuff. Now those rods are a little bit slimy from whenever I touch them but I think they're supposed to be. However, those are things where the seals on those tend to wear. And that's one of the areas where we're going to be keeping an eye on. Because that might be what's wearing, is the seals that are on these shafts. Apparently the, where they go in and out of that steering box is where they tend to leak. Here's another look at the steering components. Here's where the hydraulic lines come into the steering rack and there's where the cable comes into the steering rack. And I tried to take a good look at this stuff too and I don't see any leaking here either. So far I haven't found anything major which is great because it could just be low on fluid and this, putting some fluid in could just fix this problem right up. So I'm really trying to determine whether or not my boating season has ended if I need to be taking this out and uh, take a further look at this power steering system. Or can I just pop some more fluid in, run it for a few more weeks before it's time to take it out for the season. When I finally put some fluid in the system, uh, that cured my problem temporarily. Um, but then I found quickly that I was losing fluid again and I could see some oily residue in my bilge, which I knew was from that. So I knew I needed to quickly address that. And that's basically whenever we stopped boating this year. One of the interesting things I've been learning is that Volvo Pentas use a proprietary steering actuator system. And after a certain number of years and hours of use, I guess, the uh, O-rings in that go bad. And what happens is it shoots fluid out every time you're steering the wheel along one of those rods. The replacement part, because it's a Volvo Penta part and it's a boat part, is very, very expensive. Um, it might be a couple thousand dollars. Uh, rebuilt units, if you can find them, uh, I believe they run 800 to 1,000 dollars and they want the core. Now another fantastic aspect to this is that where it's located, it's behind my engine. And if you watched my video up here about me winterizing this engine, this engine's very difficult to work on. It's very low in the boat, so it's very far back. And I've taken off the rear seat assembly and taken out some other things to be able to make access a bit better, but that steering rack is still completely behind the engine. Additionally, there are multiple bolts that hold it in. Well, I guess three or four different bolts, which all have cotter pins in them. So basically I have to somehow get behind the engine and access these cotter pins to pull them out, to get the bolts out, to be able to remove this actuator. There's also surprisingly very few videos about this on YouTube, even though whenever I consult forums and other resources, I find that this is quite a common problem with these Volvo Pentas. So there aren't a lot of people who tackle this problem or who have addressed it, which is why we're gonna do that. Basically the way to figure out if you have a power steering rack issue with one of these Volvo Penta motors is if you're losing fluid out of your reservoir, whether it's out of a power steering pump or a separate reservoir, if you're losing fluid, you just need to pinpoint where that fluid is coming out. Many times with these Volvo Penta engines, it's coming out back here on this steering actuator assembly. 
So one of the things I read is that if basically you can't get to a couple of these things here, that the next option is that you pull your engine. You pull your engine in order to get to the steering rack. That's not something I want to be doing. So when I decided to start this job this morning, I, um, I figured there was going to be a lot of things that I was going to uh, encounter. One of them was a whole lot of swearing and cussing. Uh, another one was a whole lot of aches and pains trying to crawl around and reach around behind the engine. And the third was going to be losing lots of tools because when they fall down behind the engine into the bilge, you can't even reach to get them out of there. Um, and my magnet wants to stick to other exhaust things or whatever. So, so that's what I anticipate happening today. That's the plan. And it's always good to have a plan. And so today's plan is cuss, hurt myself, and lose lots of tools. So that's my plan. Ideally, I'm going to deviate from that plan. So here we are sometime later. I have my steering cable is loose. It's not completely pulled out yet. My hydraulic lines are off. The top bolt is out here, which is excellent. The top pin is out over here. The lower pin is out over there. So both of those pins are out with their cotter pins. And then there's a lower bolt, which is located under here. I got its cotter pin out, but getting that bolt loose is really, really challenging. And I'm in really tight quarters back here. So I may end up having to take off this big elbow to be able to get more leverage because also that nuts up underneath there and trying to get some leverage on there. Let me show you a little bit of what I'm dealing with. So here's the, here's the bolt from the top side. It's a 15 16 bolt. All this stuff is standard for some reason. And uh, I really had to put some leverage on that to get it out. Here's my top and bottom cotter pins. Here's the other two pins from the other side of the assembly and their cotter pins. So I'm down to one bolt and uh, got all my tools here, borrowed a couple things from my neighbor. And uh, yeah, so now I'm just trying to get that one bottom bolt out and it's really, really tight. So since I'm down to this one bolt, I, 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 I can't let it defeat me now. Um, I wasn't even sure I was even gonna be able to get cotter pins out because sometimes those things actually uh, seize up inside of there because they're aluminum cotter pins and stainless steel and sometimes they corrode and get stuck. And just the situation, how tight it is back in there. Uh, I wasn't sure I was even gonna be able to do that, but I've got them all out. So I've just got to get this one bolt broke free. And uh, unfortunately, the side of the engine it's on, I've got to push and I can't pull. Um, and it's on the starboard side of the engine. So uh, I'm having to uh, left-handedly push to try to uh, get that bolt. And I've only got like, uh, I've only got like this much swing space in here. So, and leaves keep falling on me. Um, so it's very little throw, but once it gets cracked free, then we should be, uh, we should be on the home stretch. And I should be sitting here with a uh, steering actuator in my hands. Here it is. It's out of the boat. That last bolt. I got it free. And uh, it's getting ready to go in a box and be sent off to Five Star Marine in Port Ritchie, Florida. Well, they will rebuild this unit and send it back to me in a few days. And then I can put it back in the boat. I'm not going to shoot a video of me putting it back in the boat because replacement is just the opposite of removal and usually goes a lot smoother. If you're thinking of tackling this job yourself, make sure that besides watching this video that you have all the proper tools that you need. Um, don't just have a couple of cheap open-end wrenches. I used line wrenches where I could. I, I made sure that I was using the uh, accurate fitting wrenches. I used penetrant fluid. Uh, I did have to use some adjustable wrenches. I needed pliers, 
vice grips, needle nose vice grips, 15, 16, 3 8 drive sockets, and 15, 16, 6 point half inch drive socket, a breaker bar, ratchets, a whole lot of patience, um, and really taking a lot of breaks and re-coming back in and taking a look at this job because I am sure that a marina charges a lot of money to be able to take this out and put a new one in. So I was able to do that because I had a whole lot of tools and I spent a lot of time and a lot of patience. Patience I didn't even know I had. So here's the, here's the unit. And to find out whether or not your unit is rebuildable, there is a number imprinted on the back here, and mine is a 3860883. There's a lot of other numbers on here, but that's basically the ID number, or the model number, I guess, and that says that this is one that can be rebuilt. Where this unit is leaking is the O-ring right here, and uh, it looks terrible. I watched another video where somebody did buy O-rings and took this apart and put the O-rings in themselves to be able to do that. But there is a company in Port Ritchie, Florida called Five Star Marine that if I send them this one, they will, send, they will rebuild it and send it back to me. And they charge uh, about $350, I think, for that service. And that's worth it to me to make sure that that's been done right. Because if I scratch up this, taking it out or have some problems doing these O-rings myself, I don't want to have to buy a whole new one of these. If it was $500, I might would try it myself, but about 350, that's not too bad. So the attachment points, this is where the cable went in right here. Steering cable, these are where the two hydraulic lines went in. These were where those pins were. Uh, this flips up this way like this. So those pins that sat in with cotter pins, one of them went all the way through here, and one went all the way through there. And then there was a bolt through here and a bolt through there. I don't know, oh, the cotter pins, I guess, go into the part that this actually mounts to or whatever, so. That's where the main bolts were, and this was the hardest one to get to, this one on the bottom. So that's getting ready to get boxed up and sent off to be rebuilt. So I don't have to do it, somebody else will do it, and they guarantee it. So um, they also recommend, after you've rebuilt this, that you use General Motors ATF fluid in this and not the synthetic <laughs> and not the synthetic type but the regular type of ATF fluid. I believe that's what this says on their website. I'm sure when they send it back there'll probably be some paperwork in there telling me. So one of the things I'm going to try to do is figure out how to flush out my system to get all of the fluids that I've put in there and that was in there before to make sure it's all just new ATF fluid in here. So that way, once I put this back in the boat, I don't ever have to deal with this again, hopefully. Thanks so much for watching. Here's a video pick just for you and a playlist of videos similar to this one. Stay safe out there in the water.